In this video, we'll be discussing instantaneous rate of change. Instantaneous rate of change is an application of the derivative. We know the derivative gives us the slope of the tangent line of a curve. Well, it's giving us the instantaneous rate of change of that curve. So we can then just extend that to application problems. So our instantaneous rate of change is just defined as the derivative f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x sub 0 plus h minus f of x sub 0 all over h. You'll see that the sub 0 has come back compared to our definition of derivative. The height and feet of a cannonball at x seconds is given by f of x equals 160x minus 16x squared. We want to know when does the ball hit the ground. Well, we actually don't need calculus for that. We just want to know when does the ball hit the ground. That happens when the height, which is our f of x, is equal to 0. So all we need to do is set our equation equal to 0 and solve. We can factor out a 16x, leaving us with 10 minus x, and then we'll set each of these factors equal to 0 and solve. We get x to be 0 and x to be 10. Now, for the context of this application, our answer of x equals 0 doesn't make sense because they want to know when it hits the ground. Well, this is x equals 0, it hasn't even left the ground yet, if this is our, our time. So, 10 seconds is our answer. In part B, we want to find the average speed over the last second. Again, they're asking for average, not instantaneous, so this does not require calculus either. We're going to use our average rate of change formula. And that's f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. It's just our basic slope formula. So now we need to find all of these values so that we can plug in. Well, the last second, we know that it takes 10 seconds to hit the ground, so the last second would be between 9 and 10 seconds, so x1 will be 9, x2 will be 10, and then we need to find the corresponding y value. Well, f of x1, that's f of 9, Plugging it into our function, f of x equals 160x minus 16x squared, we get 144. We'll do the same thing for our second x value. So we need to find f of x2, which is f of 10. We'll plug it into our function, and we get 0. And 0 shouldn't be a surprise there. We found 10 by setting it equal to 0. All right, we have all the information we need, and now we just need to plug it in. Average rate of change will be 0 minus 144 over 10 minus 9. Negative 144 over 1. Our average rate of change is negative 144, and our unit is feet per second. In part C, we want to find the average speed over the last half a second. So again, it's saying average. This doesn't require calculus. This will be average rate of change again. We need to get our x1, x2, f of x1, f of x2, and then we'll plug in. So if it's over the last half second, that means x1 would be 9.5, and x2 is going to be 10. And we'll find f of x1. 
plugging it into our original function, we're going to get 76. And then we already know what f of 10 is. That's equal to 0. So let's plug into our average rate of change formula. f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. This will be negative 76 over 0.5. When we divide that, negative 152, and our unit again is feet per second. In part D, they ask us to find the speed the instant it hits the ground. So now it's saying instant or instantaneous. This tells us that calculus is necessary. What we need to do is find f prime, right, because that's our instantaneous rate of change, and then evaluate it at 10. So we're looking for f prime of 10. I personally like to find just the derivative function first, f prime of x, and then evaluate it at 10. I personally think that's easier than plugging in 10 for x sub 0. You can do it either way. This is my personal preference. Because a lot of times they're going to ask you more than one question. So if I find the, the derivative as a function first, then I can answer a variety of questions. But if I plug the 10 in from the beginning, that's the only question I can answer. So let's find f prime of x. This will be the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. That's the limit as h approaches 0 of 160 times x plus h minus 16 times x plus h squared. And now we'll subtract our original function, this whole thing, 160x minus 16x squared all over h. So we'll clean up our numerator. Remember with this part here, x plus h quantity squared, you're going to want to write that twice and foil it out, or you can use the shortcut of the first one squared plus twice the product of the two terms plus the second one squared. The limit as h approaches 0, we'll have 160x plus 160h minus 16 times x squared plus 2xh plus h squared, distributing my negative. And we're all over h. Uh, so I see some like terms here. I might as well combine. So those are going to fall out for us. And I'm going to distribute the negative 16. Get the limit as h approaches 0 of 160h minus 16x squared minus 32xh minus 16h squared plus 16x squared all over h. We have some more like terms that can be combined minus 16x squared and 16x squared, so those are going to fall out for us. That gives us the limit as h approaches 0 of 160h minus 32xh minus 16h squared all over h. We'll factor it an h out of the numerator so we can cancel it with the h in the denominator. So 
And once we get the, rid of that factor of h in the denominator, we'll be able to evaluate the limit by substituting 0 in for h. So it follows then that f prime of x is going to be equal to 160 minus 32x. That's not our final answer though. We need to actually evaluate our derivative at x equals 10. So f prime of 10. We get negative 160 and our unit once again is feet per second. This is our speed the instant our cannonball hits the ground.